Hello and welcome to my new series of Building the Battlefields in which I'll be showing you how to produce wargaming terrain. I'll be focusing mainly on World War I and World War II inspired terrain for 28mm wargames such as Bolt Action but I'll be moving on to others in the future. So for this first video in the series I'll be taking a look at creating barbed wire obstacles as you can see here. So let's get started on building this barbed wire obstacle. So for this tutorial you will need the following items. You'll need some super glue, some wood dowels, these are about 4mm in diameter, but it doesn't really matter too much about the length. You also need some barbed wire, this is available from most uh, hobby stores, you can find this kind of thing in a lot of uh, wargaming websites as well. Now and finally for the tools you'll need some clippers and a hobby knife or similar item. Now the first task is to cut the dowels and I've made some marks along the dowels here. Now these are in three and a half centimeter sections and I've got four of them. These will make the actual uprights and then I've got another dowel here which I've marked at roughly seven and a half centimeters and that will prove that will uh, be the actual horizontal beam. Now we want to bring in our clippers for the stage. Now we don't need to worry about being too precise at the stage because we're going to be trimming down these sections anyway. So if I just squeeze there, just create the, the cut. You see the other half flinging off. I want to do this across this entire dowel, cutting each of these sections out. This leaves us with the components that we required to build the actual barricade. Now, before we move on, we want to actually sharpen some of these sections. So bring in your hobby knife for this, and you want to cut away from you, and then roughly about half a centimeter down, you want to start cutting along the edge like so, and then we're gonna twist this dowel as we go along and just sharpen it off into a point. I'm going to do this for both sides of the horizontal strut and then just for one side of each of these verticals. Once you have your sharpened pole you'll now want to create a small indentation roughly about half the distance down the actual uh, dowel itself and I've already marked off about one and a half centimeters along here. I'm going to be creating a small mark a couple of millimeters above the line and then a couple of millimeters below the line as well. I'm just going to indent some of the sections in between also and what we're doing here is I'll just be using these marks that I've done just to chip out a small indentation. I'm just going to be slowly building that up over a couple of cuts and that'll bring us something similar to this. Now once we have these two sections here, what we need to do then is we need to get some super glue. Like I've got some here. Take the lid off and we're going to be applying a small amount of glue just into this section here like so. Then we're going to be bringing in the other dowel and we're going to be lining up these two sections and then placing them on top of each other and holding them in place, creating this cross section. And I'll be holding this in place for a uh, few seconds just to allow the super glue to dry. So here we have the two cross sections and as you can see I've just uh, spin this around here. You can see I've got them standing upright with a small amount of blue tack or post attack and that just allows us to make the next step much easier. So if I just bring in the horizontal struts. We're going to be placing this across the section here so that it rests in the V of the X's. So again we want to bring in our super glue and I'm just going to be placing a small amount onto the section here. Enough so it touches each section like so. And then we bring in our horizontal and I've already lined these X's up but you should do this before you bring in the glue. And we place them on top like so and just apply pressure for a few seconds whilst the glue dries. As you can see, I have primed my barricade with a gray spray primer. You want to use something that's a gray or a black or a brown one if you have one. It just makes the next steps painting a little bit easier. So I'll be starting off with a dark brown paint, notably the Army Painters Oak Brown. Then I want to build up the layers by dry brushing over the surface after the base coat. So first of all, I'll be using Leather Brown, then Monster Brown. Then I'll be using some Skeleton Bone to pick out the shaven points on this barricade. And here we have the painted obstacles. You can see I've gone for a wooden effect with the lighter sections uh, towards the, uh, the cut off bits at the end here. Now the next step is to start applying the barbed wire. Now when you buy barbed wire, it often comes in a roll like this, but we don't want it to be um, this uniform. So I'm going to be pulling off a length around about 30 centimeters. So you end up with uh, something like this, I'll straighten it out uh, roughly. You don't need to do it too precisely at this stage. It just needs to get a rough straight line. Now at the moment it's looking very clean, very pristine, but we want to dirty it up a bit. We want to get some nice rust effects and some grime as well. But instead of priming it, I'm actually gonna be painting directly onto the metal. Now I'm going to be using two paints for this. I'll be using, first of all, um, 
the Army Painter's Fur Brown and then also the Army Painter's Strong Tone Ink Wash over the top. So first of all, for the Fur Brown, we want to just apply this paint roughly across the surface like so, leaving some of the bare metal exposed still. And this creates a nice rusty effect, as you can see it's doing here. The, the silver arrows that we've left showing through look like areas that the rust has been removed from through wear and tear. And then the, this reddish brown of the fur brown creates this really nice rust effect. You can be applying this as thickly or as lightly as you want. It doesn't really matter for this case because if, if you do obscure detail, it just looks like built up rust. So let's uh, continue applying the fur brown across the surface. With the fur brown applied, we now get this nice, rusty, ununiform appearance on the actual bobs where it's south. And we want to continue the dirt and grime, so I'm going to be using the Strong Tone ink this time and applying this over the surface of the bobs white. And you can see it's darkening the color already. And we're going to be applying this over the entirety of the actual wire itself. Now, if you have the the quick shade in the tinge, you could actually just dip the whole thing in there. You don't have to apply it with a brush like I'm doing here, but if you just have the normal ink in the pot, then you can just apply it with a brush, like so. So here we have the completed barbed wire. It's now painted and ready to be applied to the obstacle. The first task is to create a small hook on the end of the barbed wire, and we're going to be attaching this around the central strut of the obstacle, and then we're going to bend this around, like so, creating some curls around the central strut of the obstacle. You can make these as tight or as large as you want, it really is personal preference. I'm going to keep going this, doing this along the obstacle until I've run out of barbed wire. And here we have the completed obstacle alongside a bolt action miniature for scale purposes. Now we've left this miniature without a base, which means you can apply it to any type of terrain. And this is personal preference. You could easily mount it onto a small piece of MDF along with some basing sand and static grass. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please do let me know what you thought of it. I haven't really done any scenery tutorials in the past and I would like to know what your opinions and if you would like to see more going into the future. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to check out my Facebook page and also consider supporting me on Patreon, which you can find links to both in the description below. So until next time, Thanks for watching and goodbye.